raised uh, for the uh, Sound Transit 3, or ST3, as we call it. Um, and, and one of the issues that came up during that debate was about the federal obligation that we weren't going to do all of it, the taxpayers weren't going to carry all of this, but we're certainly going to carry most of it. There was an expectation there would be a federal obligation, but, but it was not going to um, uh, be the f full burden or half the burden. So now we're in this debate with the 2018 budget uh, moving forward uh, for ST2, um, for the completion of ST2. Can you, can you just, how are you handling the uncertainty of the 2018 budget then that says uh, that, that federal obligation may not be there to move forward? Well, um, in a variety of measures, uh, we are first evaluating for the benefit of the Sound Transit Board what our financing options would be. We have said definitively that we will get to Linwood just as we will get to Federal Way and beyond onto Everett and onto Tacoma, um, onto Redmond. I think the concern is uh, will the federal partnership leave, thus requiring local taxpayers to pay far more and in so doing delay the project? We have already had to delay the delivery date for getting to Linwood from 2023 to 2024, and that was in part because of the uncertainty surrounding whether we will get a full funding grant agreement and the time frame in which we might get it. Uh, this recent appropriation cycle is a very good example. We were not successful in the House Appropriations Bill in securing dollars for Linwood. There is some funding in the Senate bill that we believe Linwood would be eligible for. Um, and so we have to really watch the needle carefully, watch each step in the process, work with the FTA, work with our delegation, work with other transit agencies like ours. This is not just about sound transit, there are a number of other transit agencies around the country that similarly expect continued federal partnership. It was reasonable for them to do so. Uh, no one expected the administration to completely turn off the funding spigot as no administration has done in the last five that I've worked with. Um, but we are looking at our financing options while working very hard with members like yourself and the rest of the delegation and trying to move forward with a reasonable federal cost mass. Yeah, so, so just to put some perspective on that, again, the federal government turning off the federal funding spigot, but the local taxpayers' spigot is still running. Absolutely. The, uh, their obligation is still going with, with an expectation that there would be some help. It is precisely what we told the voters, and you, know, you heard the earlier complaint about being called out in the president's budget as reasons to terminate the federal participation. They also called out Los Angeles. They also called out Denver. The fact that all three of our regions passed uh, local tax measures to fund transit, but the reality is all three of those had an expected federal component when we brought that to the voters. In the an expected federal component that, that you had actually already talked to the federal authorities about. Well, in the case of Linwood, we've already been admitted into the engineering phase with a commitment of $1.174 billion. I mean, this was laid out, and that's why the President's budget proposal came as, you know, more than a shock. Yeah. Um, you used TIFIA quite a bit, and that's uh, in the FAST Act, I think we expanded the use of TIFIA uh, as a, a, uh, a you know, non-direct federal funding mechanism. Can you just talk briefly about how you use TIFIA uh, as a tool, sure. as a well, valuable tool? Um, TIFIA is a very valuable tool, especially for agencies that have strong credit. And, and we pride ourselves, we believe we may have the strongest credit rating of any transit agency in the country. Uh, we use TIFIA to lower the cost of borrowing to the taxpayers. So we have, uh, we believe what may still be the only master credit agreement with the DOT for four separate TIFIA loans wrapped into one agreement that by itself, over the course of those four loans, will save the taxpayers of Puget Sound between two to three hundred million dollars in borrowing costs. It's a great tool. And what like portion of that is mine and my wife's? <laughs> I'd, have to, I'd have kidding. to divide it across all regional taxpayers, but okay. it, it, it benefits everyone. Yeah, great. And then finally, I'll just note um, when the I 35 bridge collapsed, and this is for everyone, I, I think for the record, if you can get back to us. When we had the I-35 collapse in Minneapolis, that sort of uh, triggered Congress when we did the next uh, transportation bill to write into the emergency bridge funding um, provisions in that next bill, 
some uh, emergency permitting procedures, which were first then used when the Skagit River Bridge collapsed in my district, and then they, they were used in Georgia as well, I think, as part of that, uh, part of that collapse. Um, is there, from your perspective, and again, for the record, it, are there provisions in that emergency uh, set of provisions for emergency bridge repair that can be maybe used as a lesson for some permitting streamlining um, uh, as we're, you know, as we try to craft a bill and, and look at permit streamlining. If you can come back to us for the record on that, from the, uh, from the five, of, five of you, I'd appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've got a question for, it's a little parochial for Mr. McKenna, but for the committee overall. Um, Missouri's received grants for the uh, uh, service transportation alternative funding program for 16 and 17. And I'd be curious or if you could tell the committee too what uh, the progress is and, and how that's moving along and what your thoughts are. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, um, we did note uh, that uh, as part of the FAST Act, there was $95 million.